Well, for Know Your Stuff today, we're in the Uptown studio of David Healy, one of my favorite artists, and uh, certainly one of the best collectors I know as well. David, yes. how would you introduce yourself here? Uh, yeah, collector, definitely, to start. As a collector, I mean, have you collected since you were a kid? I did when I was a kid, but then I, you know, let stuff on. I had the period of stop collecting and lighting everything on fire and blowing stuff up. But uh, as I was older, I started to really appreciate the things, how they were meant to be. So the, perf the perfect nature of collecting I got into in terms of trying to get it in mint condition. I don't care about packaging, you know, because uh, it's just way too expensive for no reason. I like, I like the object. So I started collecting straight sets of whatever villains is what I mostly collect. Why that? Mostly color palettes, you know, because uh, I think I just don't like the way they design good guys. Some of them are cool and they're classic and it's like a thing that that I, I get, but it's not what really appeals to me. I've always been a fan of how you collect and I think it's a very unique way to collect, you know, whereas a lot of people collect because of nostalgia, mm -hmm. you collect purely as the object is art. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. an art collector. Yeah. You collect action figures though, and, and, and toys yeah. as art, which I think is a, a wonderful, yeah. wonderful thing, and, and something that I think uh, people of our generation who grew up around all this material, mm -hmm. um, I think there are people like like you and me who have who have this aesthetic appreciation of these things rather than necessarily, you know, I want you know Duke from GI Joe because he was the big hero. Oh you know? yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think anybody our age that's buying toys. No one's playing with them. You know, I'm pretty sure all the relationships that people are having with them are based on like a visual thing, putting it in front of them and just feeling a certain way. And that's art, I think. And I think that's why I may make things that look like toys, but toys aren't toys to me. You know, they're statements. So the ones I make are kind of the same thing. And I, I think that's why I kind of think it's art. I definitely do, but I'm not asking anybody else to, to accept it that way, unless it really works for them the same way it does for me, you know, but, you know, like, certain figures work that way for me. Like, there's no difference between that and art, and, you know, I don't really own art, but I own a lot of figures that give me the same feeling I think someone would have if they finally got a painting that they were looking for, you know. How do you, how do you explain what you've done here? Yeah, I got a box of toys from a friend, and I was just doing kit bashes at the time, and there was, he's like, oh, here's some toys, I know you like toys, and I wasn't really working with toys yet. And the uh, Luke X-Wing, the head was blown off by his brother with a firecracker. And then there was a torch in the box too. So I kind of just put it on top and uh, I put it, switched the head. And I was like, oh, that's weird. That kind of feels like something. So then I painted it. When I painted it, I kind of went like the Metal Gear Solid kind of thing. And he's kind of got the mustache and the facial hair. So I was like, well, that's weird. Like these two characters kind of turned into like a solid snake type guy. And that's when I kind of realized, like, oh, I think this is something. So I, I, I had the formula. Yeah. And it's simple. It's super minimal. But that's the point is that, you know, you can do whatever you want trying to customize stuff and, like, throwing skulls on things and, like, a weird lizard arm. But there's something really cool to just be able to take two things that are really familiar and totally change it. I remember when I first saw it, I didn't know you at the time. And, uh, you know, these were certain things were displayed at Toy Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. And... The Suck Lord, who we know also, uh, was with me, and yeah. we were both looking at, at your work, and uh, I remember Morgan looked at me and he goes, you know, I'm glad my stuff's funny. <laughs> you know, just because your stuff yeah. is so it's powerful. It's a totally different way to look at toys. Yeah. Where do you see this going for you as a, both a collector and an artist? I'd like someone to see what I'm doing and maybe take it to another level or get my stuff on my own into a different level, you know, either way, but I feel like it should get bigger. I want to share stuff with more people and show people that I can, you can trust me with licensed things that you grew up with to kind of do something new with it. I think, you know, mash culture and stuff is really popular with everything now. Mm -hmm. Like if you watch the Grammy Awards, it's always like country and hip hop and stuff like that. And they like that. And I like that too. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'm worthy of doing that on a level for like Hasbro or Mattel. Like, I don't know if they're at that point now. You know, I'm sure they are because they see what's going on and they're the big business of toys is already reflecting what's going on in this scene. So if they start looking around for brains, you know, I wouldn't mind being one of those people, mm -hmm. you know. And to kind of see how you appreciate, you know, the vintage material and the way you cultivate your collection, it's it's inspiring. It always inspires me when I see all this. Oh, good. Yeah. So 
So uh, thanks, dude. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs>